Hey, I'm James from Smoking That Barbecue, and today I'm doing low and slow cook on the Old Country G2 offset smoker. So I picked up an eight, nine pound Costco pork shoulder and armed with the information from not only my first cook where I realized some of the incredible efficiency of the fully insulated firebox on the Old Country G2. In fact, if you didn't see that video, I even tried. It was an error, I think, on Academy Sports website where they listed sort of, you know, 8 to 12 hours of burn time on charcoal. But nonetheless, I was curious just how efficient this offset is. I filled up the uh, firebox with charcoal, started a fire, and was able to maintain usable cooking temperatures above 225, 250 degrees for eight hours. So this is one of the most energy efficient offsets that I've ever used. But the opposite uh, of that I noticed in my first cook is I didn't get the sort of the full offset flavor that I become accustomed to. So with a little bit of uh, tweaks to my fire management approach, I wanna give a second cook a go, which is why I picked up today's uh, pork shoulder. I seasoned this with my homemade uh, Ultimate Texas uh, barbecue rub, which is made up of my family's favorite things from Goldie's, Black's, as well as Franklin's. And I share that on my website uh, for free. There's no charge if you want to go check that out. I installed a meter probe and uh, placed our pork shoulder in the center of our offset smoker. Uh, I forgot to mention earlier before I like to get cooking on this offset or any of the other ones that I've owned or used. I like to get a quick heat soak fire while we're prepping our food. So you do that with some kiln dried grocery store wood, grab my grow blazer grill gun, start a nice hot fire overshoot our temperatures, which is going to get, uh, in our case, nearly 600 pounds of quarter inch steel uh, fully heat soaked. Let that start to die down and then transition to our cooking fire, which is a piece of wood, then two pieces of wood, and then another piece of wood sort of on those staggered intervals in order to keep us in and around that 270 degree average uh, cooking temperature in Fahrenheit. So now that we've got our pork shoulder on, the game plan is just to continue uh, adding and I'll see you much later on in the day, if not the evening. We are ready to dive in for our taste test and see how the Old Country G2 did on its second low and slow cut. So we've been running right along on the temperature gauges at 250 degrees Fahrenheit all day. Uh, a note on the meter chart, I'll put that up here so you can see the intervals uh, all day have averaged about 25 minutes between going one split and two splits. I did install the probe vertically, which is sitting right up near the top of our smoke chamber, which is where the hot air is passing through uh, in that arc. Just for a test, I did put it down at the great level and it matches exactly what I'm seeing on my Old Country G2 included probes. In fact, three are included. I didn't install that uh, for the upper position, but that would have uh, matched the what I'm seeing uh, in the meter chart. So our average has been uh, 250 degrees Fahrenheit, adding a wood split every 25 minutes. And in order to keep our coal bed going, that's one split, then two splits, then one split, uh, then uh, back to two splits. And that has been uh, working all day in terms of keeping our temperatures really flat, keeping our coal bed going, uh, and helping develop the uh, bark that we're working on. Speaking of developing the bark, the game plan for today's cook, I'm drawing inspiration from a test I did earlier in the year where I did uh, an evaporative cooling test along with some IR camera data in order to better understand what's going on inside of uh, our offset smokers. And so in that test, I included two direct flows. So the Old Country G2, as well as my Huron G2, uh, as well as a reverse flow offset. And what I found really was illuminating in terms of what's going on, particularly with my observations of just how efficient the firebox is on the Old Country G2. So our evaporative cooling uh, was the lowest of the three. The water temperature in terms of being able to transfer energy from our heat sources uh, was the lowest of the three. And so I've seen this uh, in other cooks where we're almost walking a line between offset in terms of nice clean smoke as well as Kamado efficiency. Speaking of Kamados, I use this analogy all the time. We have three heat sources in all of our grills. So imagine Mortal Kombat fighters with different strengths. So if we were to take a traditional offset, its number one strength is convection airflow. On the contrast to that, something like an energy efficient Kamado grill would rank much lower in terms of the convection airflow uh, that it's able to produce. But 
uh, it would have much higher conductive energy. This is because our food is sitting on deflectors, which are sitting right above the fire. And that tends to transfer a bunch of energy to our cooking surfaces, which in turn transfers some of that energy to whatever it is that we might be cooking and smoking. And last but not least is our radiant energy. And even though this is a quarter inch steel cook chamber, it doesn't radiate near as much energy as a thick ceramic Kamado dome does, which is why the cook times on Kamados can often be, you know, 50% quicker than what I'm able to achieve on almost any backyard sized offset. So with that test data in mind, all I've worried about today is nice, clean fire and keeping the temperatures on that average 250 degree range, because we're going to make up for some of this pit's energy efficiency and lack of conductive energy uh, and gain some of that cook time back uh, by using aluminum foil to wrap our pork shoulder and take that all the way to probe tenderness. Now that our bark is set, I think this is the perfect time to get our pork shoulder into a foil wrap and I'll rejoin you later on for our taste test. All right, our rest is finally over. Let's get it into a pan, shred it up, see how it tastes. I can tell it's tender, so I'm just removing the strings here. It already wants to come apart. Let's dive in. That is zero effort to shred. Oh, it's like butter. Cheers. Well, as you can tell from the shred, the tenderness is on the money. Go for one more bite here just to finish the thought on the taste. So is it good? Well, this is several things. Well, it's pulled pork, so it's obviously going to be good, but this is different. This has a low smoke profile compared to something or anything that I would do on an offset smoker. Now, in part, I uh, wanted to speed it up before we lose our daylight. And so by going into the foil, that reduced just sitting exposed to smoke for those last few hours of the cook. So perhaps that's part of it. But this is also consistent with other cooks I've experienced on the G2. By being so much more efficient, we burn less wood. In my larger size offsets, I'm burning the Jerby Fire method. So that's five logs. So two facing front to back with three stacked. And that's getting me about an hour uh, for those five logs. Whereas here, if I'm going one, and then two, that's burning three logs in the same hour. So there's, there's a lot less active fire burning in terms of the smoke passing <laughs> over our food. So I'm not sure that efficiency necessarily is our friend for flavor, but I will add for small backyard offsets, this is, I think, the easiest one I've ever had to use. That one, two, one, two, it works like clockwork. I had no issue getting those splits to catch the minute that we added them into the firebox. And so if this is your first offset, this may solve the number one problem that I see people just jumping into the offset category that they have is all of a sudden they're overwhelmed by the complexity of fire management. This is an easy to run offset. If you're an offset pro you've been dealing with the tedious nature of adding wood at every 15 minute intervals on a smaller offset uh, but you're getting the full flavor of a live fire burning cleanly and you don't have the efficiency of the firebox to make that easier but at the same time not robbing any open flames uh, from your cook you might actually find this is a step closer back to something like a Weber Smoky Mountain or a charcoal grill with wood smoke versus having if I'm honest, the true sort of full 100% offset experience. So if you're deciding uh, on the smoker, it's good. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. This is a really good pulled pork and you are gaining ease of use, efficiency, saving some money on uh, fuel costs. But I also think you're shaving a little bit of the maximum performance or the true performance that an offset at its best can deliver. So hopefully that helps you sort of find where you are in your priorities. The other thing for me that I would like to see if we're making some of these trade-offs, uh, particularly on the flavor of the offset, is the speed of cooking. And that's where the evaporative cooling tests and the water temperature and things like that, because we are leaking sort of heat out of the cook chamber and we don't have something like a reverse flow, you know, baffle plate radiating energy in there. This took just as long uh, as an offset and has less of that flavor. So I think if I could shuffle the cards a little bit differently, I would want to, if I'm gonna make any trade-off, 
cutoffs gain speed uh, so that you're not starting your fire uh, if you're doing something like a brisket very, very early in the day in order to have it done uh, in time for dinner. But the way the combination of all these uh, heat characteristics come together is efficiency saving fuel cost, uh, efficiency causing uh, ease of management easy to use, uh, but also very, very uh, tight dampers because of that energy efficient fire resulting in a lower smoke profile than some uh, backyard offsets are able to produce. Nonetheless, this is still really good pulled pork. I don't run into many pulled porks that I don't like. I'm James Swick at Barbecue signing off. Remember, don't be afraid to fire it up.